LEGO makes these fun little engine mechanisms that run when the vehicle is pushed. But I'm interested in reversing this so that we can drive the engine, like a real one, allowing us to hopefully power some inventions. Now, my previous experiments highlight that LEGO doesn't really like being heated up. Or we get this lovely melty, smelly goodness. So, hot expanding gas is clearly out of the question. Fortunately, there are many other ways to drive a piston engine. Like these pneumatic cylinders that can be used to power things like this weird bug, or even a generator. Today though, I want to try something different. Electromagnetism. Just like the way hot expanding gases drive a regular piston engine, we can mimic this by pulsing current through a coil of wire, driving a magnet. So, in this video, we're going to experiment with some ways of driving an engine using this principle. And we're also going to test out a magnetic clutch to put our engine into action by gradually delivering power from the engine to the drivetrain. Now, some folks are likely looking at this and thinking, hey, this concept looks like a solenoid engine. Well, this little guy is a solenoid. Man, in essence, we're going to borrow from this concept. Now, this little solenoid works by pulling a metallic arm into a coil when some current is chucked through it. And if you rapidly pulse the current, it can cycle the piston which can be used to drive an engine. So let's give this a quick try. To make an engine driven by this solenoid, we're going to need to make something that we can punch to drive a crank. Now this lever with a rubber pad might do the trick. And after securing the mechanism to a base, and giving it an output, now we have a lever that can drive the crankshaft. And adding a flywheel will allow it to run nice and smoothly. So now we can punch the lever, and if we get the timing just right, we can continue to drive it. Question is, how do we get the solenoid to have the right timing? Well, first, let's mount our solenoid to just the right place. These bendy pieces will give it the perfect angle we need to punch the rubber pad. Ugh. Hopefully now, each punch will drive the flywheel. Let's give it a quick test. Hey! It looks like the position and angle are about right. But as we can tell here, the timing is all off. And the timing needs to be perfect to get this to run continuously. So this copper strip can be used to create a mechanical timer. If we use some blue tack to attach a small strip to a Lego cylinder, now we have a contact pad that can cycle on and off when the crank rotates. So if we then expose our two wires here to the copper strip, this will close the circuit, driving the solenoid. Let's give it a quick test with a 9 volt battery. Hey voila, we have a little solenoid engine. I quite like the clickety clack as it cycles through the piston strokes. But I've gotta say, as cool as it looks, it's a little disappointingly weak. Well, before we upgrade to this monster, you know what else was a little disappointing? Sitting down with Katie only to realize that we couldn't watch pranks here Aww. in Dublin. But thanks to NordVPN, today's partner, Katie and I have been able to get around this. So Katie's brother Peter was a writer, director and producer of a hilarious TV show called Prinks. And we were all excited to sit down and watch it together, only to find that even though we live on the same island here in Dublin, the show was released in Northern Ireland and restricted to the UK only. <laughs> well, that hardly seems fair, but with NordVPN, we can just switch our location from Ireland to the UK, and just like that, we have access to the entire UK video library. Hey. With NordVPN and my link below, you can access the internet as though you were in any other country, allowing you to get around region-locked media. I can't believe how many shows we've been missing out on, and now we can pick any country in the world to watch what they watch. And not only this, but NordVPN's Threat Protection Pro keeps your online presence safe from attacks, phishing, malware, and all of the other common online attacks. That means I can purchase my LEGO and electronic components while connected to any other network, knowing that everything is safe. And with my link NordVPN slash BrickJams, which you can also find in the link below, you'll get a bonus of 4 months extra service when you purchase a 2 year plan. And with a 30 day money back guarantee, you can try it out risk free. A big thanks to NordVPN for partnering with me and allowing me to scale up my crazy contraptions. Starting with this massive solenoid. Surely this has got to be a big jump from the little one. Well, looks like we'll need this beefy LiPo battery to even get this monstrous thing to run. Whoa! At this stage, I'm not even sure LEGO can handle the solenoid. There's a good chance it'll destroy anything I attach it to. Ooh. But hey, whatever happens, I guess we'll learn something. Let's give it the old college try. With a flywheel attached to this crank, and a good long stroke distance, hopefully this can accommodate the large solenoid. So we'll use some blue tack again to secure the solenoid in place. Unfortunately, it fits right between the square lift arm things. That was a stroke of good luck. And I'll have this engine lie down this time rather than upright. 
Hopefully, if this thing even works at all, it might prevent the engine from bouncing around. And I'm expecting this thing to be violent. So let's hook up our LiPo battery and give it a whirl. Alright, I have no idea what this is gonna do. <laughs> Whoa, even just a momentary touch of the battery sends this thing spinning like mad. And then... yeah. Mm. This might be a bit much for LEGO. I want to come back to this concept, but it's clear that for now we need something a bit more... compatible with LEGO. So let's get back to our electric piston concept. I think we can mimic the movement of a traditional gasoline piston engine. Ideally what I want is to replicate the motion of expanding gas which pushes a piston, which then drives a crank. Except, instead of expanding gas, we're gonna use a coil of wire. I'm using 24 gauge wire here, and we'll wind 80 loops of this. This coil now will act as an electromagnet, which will provide our pushing force. And then this massive neodymium magnet will act as the head of the piston, which will get pushed by the electromagnet coil. So we'll set up the cage of the engine like so. And then to hold the magnet in place, we'll just shove it between these pieces like this. I just love these particular magnets as they happen to fit LEGO so perfectly. Now that we have our head of our piston, we can set up the pivot point for the crank. Yeah, and then slide it onto the rails like so. Then to make sure it tracks perfectly, I'll also chuck these axles into the engine frame. And now the piston slides perfectly along the rails. Ah, it's a hell of a heavy piston, but the wire coil is thick and the magnet is strong. So I feel we may even be able to drive it from the little 9 volt battery. After securing everything in place, and attaching a flywheel to help it pass the dead stop, let's see if a 9 volt battery can push it. Okay, well, it can certainly provide a little bit of a punch, but clearly timing is going to be important to keep this thing running. <laughs> I feel so undextrous doing this. Undextrous? Is that a word? So, let's add a timing mechanism. These two gears will allow us to fine-tune the position of the copper pads, which will once again serve as our timer. And for now, I'm just going to be lazy and sandwich the ends of these wires between some axle pieces so that they can make contact with the timing wheel. Hopefully now, when we add our 9 volt battery, it'll provide a little punch during each cycle of the piston stroke. Hell yeah, that's exactly what I was hoping for. Hey. Honestly, I'm stunned I got this working on the first attempt. I must have made another maybe 15 different variations of electric piston engines for this video, many of which were just terrible. But this was the first one, and it still runs great. Now, I'm sure some of you are wondering what happens if we graduate from this weak-ass 9 volt battery to the LiPo battery and chuck some real current through it. Well, let's see. Okay, here it goes. Whoops. She's shaking herself around a little bit. Okay, here we go again. Okay. Okay, I just secured the wires using some blue tack here. Okay, let's try that one more time. Whoa, jumping around a bit. Hey! That's an enthusiastic little engine. Cool sparks. But if I hold it in place, it builds up some lovely speed. Now I'm pretty sure this one could probably power some LEGO contraptions. As long as I don't mind being bounced around a bunch. Youch! But we'll get back to that idea in a bit. Wow, that is hot. Okay, well, as much as I like this engine, it introduced way too much vibration. And it was just a bit too big. I wanted to reduce the footprint and make something a bit more compact. So I experimented with quite a few engines like this one here, with a shortened stroke, hoping that that would make them run faster and a bit more efficiently as the magnets would be closer to the coil. And honestly, I struggled quite a bit. But eventually, I came up with a design that I'm actually really happy with. And this time, I managed to make it much smaller. Now this wee little thing should hopefully be able to make itself useful and actually power some small LEGO contraptions as well. For this little engine, we're going to use the same wire coil that we used in our piston demonstration. Pop it right here. Then these countersunk neodymium magnets with a little hole in the middle can fit perfectly onto the central axle of the engine. And we'll use these little guys here for a short stroke. So with the crank in place, we can pop the whole thing onto the axle. And we've got just enough space to allow us to use a variety of gearing on the output. Now when the crank rotates, we have a super compact piston engine. Can a 9 volt battery provide enough oomph to drive this thing? Well, fortunately, with such a short stroke, the magnets are kept close to the coil, making it a bit more efficient. We can then apply a gear reduction to the output so that we can power some things with it. Now this engine isn't really strong, so we'll need a significant reduction. 
Now I've got to say, I'm delighted with how small I managed to shrink this thing. And then of course we'll need our timing wheel, and a flywheel. And this time, I'm going to use some of this lovely flexible copper wick as our contacts for the timer. These should make much better contact than the stiff copper wires. They're also nice and soft, so they can gently touch the timer wheel without creating much drag. So, with everything hooked up, let's give this little thing a whirl. Starting with our 9 volt battery. Hey, hell yeah, I just love this little thing. It's small and pretty weak, but it runs. By the way, if you'd like to see more of these silly experiments with LEGO and technology, feel free to subscribe or drop a like. Cheers! And if you'd like to see some more behind the scenes of how I make these things, my Patreon is in the description. So this is all well and good, but I'm guessing you're wondering if the LiPo battery gives this thing any more of a kick. Well, let's give it a quick try. Now, the speed unfortunately kicks the copper wick away from the timer a bit, but if I hold it in place, it builds up to a pretty nice speed. Question is though, can we actually power anything with it? Now something to note is these solenoid style engines are super fun and satisfying, and they do a great job of demonstrating how piston engines work. But a downside is that they're typically pretty inefficient. Now there's a reason why regular electric motors are designed the way they are. But in my mind, if we are going to make these solenoid engines, we've got to be able to make them do something useful. So uh, here's a tiny wee tank thing. If we can power this axle, we've got some power to the wheels. Now we have a tiny tank. The flywheel is connected directly to the crank, and we have a 15 to 1 gear reduction to the tank drive. So let's start by giving it a try using the 9 volt battery. Alright, fingers crossed. Yeah, uh, not quite. Mm, wow, looks like we might need our lipo again. So it looks like while suspended above the ground, it runs okay. But clearly the engine is still struggling to run, even with a 15 to 1 reduction. And then when we put it on the ground, it grinds to a halt almost immediately. Yeah, that's a pity. At least if we hold it up, it does look pretty cool pumping away while driving the tracks. So now, to get an engine to run better, it's clear we need to help the engine get past its sticking point during each cycle. And what better way to do this than by doubling up and making a two-piston engine? I started with this short-stroke inline two-piston engine, but if we want to output some real torque, we really need a longer stroke, and some much stronger magnets. These are N52 neodymium magnets, the strongest you can get. And we're going to use two of them in an inline two configuration. Now, for this engine, my goal is to create something that can run smoothly off a 9 volt battery, while also still outputting some real power. And then when we graduate to the 11 volt LiPo, this should be a seriously capable engine. Now, I did have to space the magnets a little bit apart, as they otherwise interfere with each other a bit. So the magnets are so strong, they do repel each other a little bit, but I actually feel like it helps them get through a sticking point in the middle. For our coils, I'm using a relatively compact design. And if we measure the resistance across it, we get... 2.8 ohms. Which means with our LiPo, it'll draw a peak of around 4 amps. So I'm hoping it'll run cool with a 9 volt battery, as it has high internal resistance, but it'll likely run hot with the LiPo. Once again, I've left some space to allow different gearing on the output and the flywheel, and we'll use a similar timing mechanism. But this time, to get the timing of both pistons to work, we'll need to position the contacts on opposite sides of the timer. So as the timer wheel rotates, it closes the circuit for each piston alternately sending pulses to one, then the other, over and over. Alright, let's give her a test by sticking our battery into the inputs. We'll start with a gearing of 1 is to 3, meaning the flywheel will run faster than the crank. Okay, fingers crossed. Hey, hey, hey. It takes a few seconds to build up top speed due to the higher gearing, but it does get up to a really lovely speed considering it's running with a 9 volt battery. Quite a speed on the output. I absolutely love this thing, it's so satisfying to watch it pump away. Now in a minute, I'll try and power something with it, but I'd love to hear from you folks if you've got some ideas of things I can do with this engine. I'm sure there's some cool ideas I'm not thinking of. And... the coils are not too warm. But let's fix that. How does this run off the LiPo? Whoa! Damn, that's impressive. Ooh. Now this is still with the 1 is to 3 gearing on the output. Ooh, yeah, that is toasty. Using the same gearing, can it move this relatively large and heavy rotor? 
Mm, well, with the 9 volt battery it certainly struggles a little more. After a few seconds it does build some speed. With the LiPo though, it fares significantly better. So this is all geared up. Very nice. What if we instead go for direct drive? Now with this hefty flywheel. Oh, damn, that's wild. Whoa. Okay, well, let's pop off this wheel and try the heavy rotor. All right, let's see. Very nice. <laughs> and there we go. Wow. With direct drive, this engine definitely has some power behind it. And then when we remove the power, it free wheels for a while. Okay, great. Now we know we have an engine that can actually do some real work. So now, it's time to make a magnetic clutch. I have an idea to use these tiny but powerful magnets to build a clutch, so we can power the engine up to full speed, and then gradually transmit power to a vehicle. Now we have two axles that are attracted to each other, and when one rotates, it causes the other to rotate as well. So if we then stick these two axles onto a frame like so, we essentially have a single axle held together by magnets. Then we need an input that can slide. Spin the input, and we turn the central axle. But now, if we separate the discs, and we spin the input, the output doesn't move. Bring the discs closer together though, and gradually power is transmitted to the output. I quite like this magnetic clutch over a friction clutch as it seems to have less drag against it. Alright, let's try it out. Using again this large rotor. However, as we can see, this rotor is pretty heavy, and when the clutch is closed, there just isn't enough strength to drive the rotor. So I guess we're going to need to gear down the output. We'll then use this gear selector on a rail to control the clutch. Now we can open and close the clutch, pull it back, and the engine can speed up. Close the clutch then, and the power goes to the output. A simple linear actuator then can control the position of the clutch. Pop her into place. And now when we rotate the actuator, we can transmit power very slowly. With this gear reduction on the output, we can make sure that we have enough torque from the clutch to go to the wheels of our vehicle. So with the clutch open, we can see nothing is happening. And then when we close the clutch, she springs into action. Now this tiny motor from circuit cubes can then be used to control a linear actuator and clutch. And so now with the motor running, when we close the clutch, power is transmitted to the wheels. And it looks like we should have enough power to drag whatever weight is attached to it. So now let's see if we have enough power to turn the rotor. Hmm, yep, seems we're good. Then to make sure our engine can definitely drive the clutch, I'm going to introduce another gear down. This thing will run slow as hell, but I don't want the engine to stall. Okay, let's prep the engine to connect with the clutch. Well, stick some wheels over here, so I guess this is the back of our vehicle now. And if we introduce the two halves together, and secure them with a bunch of this stuff, then pop our clutch motor back on. Hey, now we have our piston engine powered car with a magnetic clutch. So let's open the clutch and start up our engine. Here we go. Interestingly, because I've got such a gear down, even with the clutch fully open, there's actually just enough torque to get the wheels moving. Et voila! We have a piston engine driving a car. It's probably not going to win a drag race anytime soon, but I just love watching this thing go. The flywheel seems to be just big enough to keep the engine running, and with the clutch fully closed, there's still loads of torque going to the wheels. Now, I guess the next step has got to be asking the question, but what if we were to scale this thing up even more? Like build an engine with three or four or even more pistons for smoother and more powerful outputs. Or perhaps even going in the opposite direction and seeing how small it's possible to make these little engines. I've almost got this thing running, but it needs a bit more time in the oven. So please, let me know in the comments if you'd like me to tackle some of these ideas. And if you prefer bigger, or maybe smaller. Alright, cheers folks!